Hey guys, so the biggest question I get all the time in the comments, messages sent to me, I see it posted on message boards still, uh, despite Nintendo kind of talking about it not happening, uh, is the possibility of there being a GPU in the dock, not necessarily now because they've confirmed that that's not uh, the case for launch, but in the future to make it stronger. Now, originally I thought, uh, no, that's not something that they will do. I don't even think it's possible at this point. And after doing some research, which I, of course, looked over everything I could find, I ran across an interesting announcement, an interesting article that was posted earlier this year, and then they kept following up with it. it it's from NVIDIA. And we got to a point where I think that the Switch could, it could add GPU to a dock in the future. Now, there's a couple pitfalls with this, of course. Uh, but we'll get into those in a minute. I just want to explain to you guys what, what I found exactly, and you can kind of give me your opinions as well, and just let me know what you think. I'm going to go ahead and go through the article and the specs and everything of, of what's been developed and just see what that tells us for the Switch exactly. So I'm going to show you a board here on the screen. Um, take a look at this. This is, uh, you see two Tegra chips there, and this is part of the Drive PX2 board. This is what NVIDIA has developed for uh, self-driving cars, essentially. And this was at the beginning of the year that they showed this off. Very, very limited, very limited press uh, exposure for this. And then down the road, April and then August, they started releasing more and more specs about this thing. And this board you're seeing here has the Tegras on the front. On the back, I can't find a picture of the back, but they've basically told us on the back, there are two GPUs that are Pascal based. Again, the same uh, same base and format of the chips that are uh, the chip that's supposedly in the Switch at this point, a Pascal GPU attached to the Tegra with ARM processors. Now, what's interesting about this Drive PX2 is it is extremely powerful. Uh, we're talking uh, this board you're seeing here that I that I'm showing you on screen is technically more powerful than the PS4 the PS4 Pro, and the Xbox One all put together. And then you still need to add a little more to that. That's how powerful this board is. Uh, I don't think it's out yet. It's going into self-driving cars, like I said. Uh, this is a huge outlier for what we can expect with the Switch. Uh, don't, don't take me uh, the wrong way here. This is not telling us that the Switch is going to be super powerful or anything. But this is giving us a look at the future for Tegra and the ARM chips, because this set here is so powerful, it surprised, it honestly shocked me how strong this thing is. Now, what I'll do is, I'm going to show you the specs for this thing, and first I want to show you, th these are like basically drawings and stuff that they came up with, charts, and you'll see here that there are actually two CPUs, obviously because there's two Tegras, two GPUs on board here. And the CPUs basically each have their own pool, from what I can tell, of 8 gigs of DDR4, low power, of course. And then each GPU is using 4 gigs of GDDR5. That's that's how much how much uh, hardware is in this thing. It literally has two CPUs and two GPUs uh, in there. And, I mean, that looks like it equates to uh, 24 gigs of RAM <laughs> overall. So, don't get me wrong, this is like super overkill from what I can tell, but it's for a self-driving car, which of course needs a lot of power to do things like, uh, you know, uh, determine where it is in the world so it doesn't run someone over. So that's kind of important. I understand why you want to go overkill with this thing. And what's interesting here, you'll notice right away, this is the first time that I've seen a Tegra use a GPU that is using graphics memory. This is GDDR5, which is set up specifically for video cards. If you get a video card, usually it has GDDR5 because it is a faster RAM that is set up for things like rendering screens for you when you play a game, for example. The, that was the big edge that the PS4 had against the original Xbox One, is that uh, the Xbox One was using slightly faster, I mean, it's 2133 megahertz DDR3, but the, the GPU in the PS4 had access to GDDR5, which essentially tripled the bandwidth of the Xbox One. So things like uh, 1080p was much easier to achieve on the PS4. And that was the big thing that was going going on this past generation was the PS4 was able to render 1080p so much better than the Xbox One. If you remember, the Xbox One would either have to upscale a 720p image or upscale a 900p image to 1080p. And that was due to memory bandwidth for the most part. And looking down the chart still, uh, you'll see that it has computation and memory. Uh, these are, again, estimates. None of this is at all confirmed. 
but it looks to be okay so the gdr5 in this case seems slow it's only at 80 gigabytes a second that's not fast um and their explanation is they simply don't need it to be super fast because it's not drawing it's not rendering images this is more for using computations uh and that's why it's not really needed to be as fast apparently they said it can be faster if they need it to but there's no need for it to be faster so if you can do things like you know generate less power less heat why would you push something you don't need to push in that case that could also be an excuse i don't know <laughs> Um, I'm not in the boardroom, like I said, I'm not in their engineering room, but I can tell you uh, that is slower than what GDDR5 usually is. Like I said, I think in the PS4, I think that its bandwidth for the regular PS4 is somewhere between 140 to 176 gigabytes a second. Some people don't know. Some people say 140. Some people will say 176. Some people say 180. But it is it is above 140. I will say that, which is obviously faster than this 80 gigabytes a second uh, from the GDDR5. Apparently the the RAM from the CPU uh, to the low power DDR4 is faster than say uh, the memory bus between an i7 6700K and its RAM, which is tremendous if you really consider that. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that these CPUs are more powerful. Don't get me wrong there. It's not necessarily more powerful than i7, but apparently you can talk to its RAM faster, which is interesting again for the future of ARM. Now, what does this exactly mean? in our case for the switch so there's a couple ways you can look at this for the nintendo switch now you could take it at face value and say cool they're developing a very powerful system uh that could be out in seven years or something like that eight years and uh i'm going to tell you now this board that you see here will never come to consoles that i can tell anyway they would develop something different what you're seeing here costs allegedly by it says nvidia cost fifteen thousand dollars per unit uh, and again, that's for self-driving cars. Self-driving cars, of course, are tremendously expensive. They're not cheap. Uh, and it's usually used, obviously, Google has a big investment in that right now. I know they, they do a lot of self-driving car stuff. Tesla is really into self-driving cars. Um, so these are not for consumers to buy. Uh, but the technology is interesting, like I said, because it gives us kind of a window to look into the future of what we could expect from ARM and the Tegra chips. Now, the big thing I take away from this is two things one it's possible it's possible to have two tegras work together in essentially an sli or a crossfire configuration and what that means is right now the switch can have let's just say just for argument's sake it has the x1 uh with a pascal gpu or something like that and it clocks in around the xbox one now we would want it to be closer to the ps4 over time obviously especially over the course of so many years because you know the pro and everything come out and keep in mind arm doesn't need as many teraflops for the most part to create things like 4k images that's obvious by the x1 being able to do things like stream like netflix at 4k despite being less powerful than the xbox one and significantly less powerful than the ps4 and what you can do is my thought rather than release a dock that has a much more powerful gpu in it which to me doesn't make sense because if you're releasing a dock that has HDMI out, has an entire GPU CPU combo essentially in there because it's going to be Tegra, they're probably parent ARM chip with it anyway. Its own RAM. Why wouldn't you just why wouldn't you just release a console? Because if you do all of that, if you put a cutting edge GPU in a in a dock, you're building a mini console and you're going to have to sell it for like 200 to 250 dollars. At that point, it's going to be hard to explain to the consumer that you need this to make your games look better on the TV because they won't understand why they have to put the switch in there. They'll just be like, well, why can't I just plug in this dock and play it? Because then you're buying the switch for 250 to 300, then you're buying the dock for 250. All of a sudden you're looking at a $500 price tag. So my thought here is they would release a much less expensive dock that has the same GPU in it that the switch has. And it would work in a SLI or crossfire, I guess you could say configuration uh, between two Tegras because they've shown it's possible. You can see it here. The other interesting thing to, to consider here, guys, is they've shown that Pascal with a Tegra can work with GDDR5. And I kind of ruled GDDR5 out because I didn't think it would be possible to run with a Tegra. I always say low power DDR4 is the way to go. If they can put GDDR5 in there, put that in there. That's going to run better. It's going to be faster and it'll render images better. So I, if they can do it, do it. But there is a chance that it's not ready for market yet, especially if the Switch went into development, you know, a year and a half ago, two years ago from NVIDIA side, it's hard to say 
if that was available at that time or if they even had it on the drawing board. It's possible. It is. I mean, the P when the PS3 launched, it had Blu-ray, and that was so new, I wouldn't have been able to believe that it had it. So you can kind of go either way with it there. Keep in mind, guys, there's two bottlenecks here. There's two. The first bottleneck with this system is that USB-C connection. Now, a lot of people, you know, I, myself included, I'm happy that USB-C is there, but not every USB-C port cable, not every one is compatible with, say, Thunderbolt or has the same bandwidth. You have to design it to have that ability. There's a lot of pins in there. There are chips that basically are on the other side inside the switch that basically uh, talks to the USB-C port and then whatever it's plugged into. Depends on how fast that chip is. A lot of times Samsung develops those. ARM develops those too, actually. Those are sometimes ARM chips on their own. But keep in mind, that has to be fast enough to uh, basically interpret what the GPU in the dock is throwing at it. And then keep in mind also, the other bottleneck is the tablet itself. Whatever you play on the TV, Nintendo wants to make sure you can take it with you and have an experience that's similar on the go. It doesn't have to be as the, the exact same because we're pretty confident on the tablet screen it's going to be 720p. On the TV, it'll be 1080p, possibly higher frame rate. This is fine, but keep in mind, we're not going to get, if they release a dock with more power, it's going to be to increase frame rates possibly to increase resolution, it's not going to be able to, it's not going to be to play a game that can't be played on the already existing tablet. So if you're, if you're putting out a GPU inside the dock that can pair with that one and they work together, it's just going to be to create a bigger resolution or create better frame rates. It's not going to be create and play an entirely new game that's not possible on the tablet. So the big question is, do I think Nintendo will release a GPU down the road in a dock? Uh, I, I don't think they will, mostly because Nintendo does not care too much about things like resolutions, and uh, they care more, I think, about the game itself. Uh, that's I think that's obvious with how they've always done business. Keep in mind, though, from what all reports are saying, this is a different group heading spearheading this, this Switch launch and the development cycle. NVIDIA is in there, and I, I feel like NVIDIA is also calling some shots. So it's very possible that they do it. I don't think they will. I think they would rather spend the time and the money and just build an, an in-home system and let the Switch become their kind of their handheld system that replaces the 3DS down the road. That would be my guess. I feel like they'd rather have the Switch be, be on the go and get rid of the 3DS and then just walk in with, you know, E3 so many years from now, walk in with an ARM-based, Tegra-based home console that is very powerful, capable of things like 4K, capable of things like VR. And that that's the other thing that maybe, maybe a dock gets released for, is for VR. If Nintendo really wants to get into that, I feel like they have no intention of getting into VR right now because it's still super, super young. But it, I'm not saying it's not possible. It's possible. I don't think it'll happen. I think, like I said, we'll wait for another generation for them to release another system um, and they'll just stick with this one as long as they can. I mean, the Wii U, for God's sake, is still 300 in stores. So Nintendo has has a uh, uh, has a history of clinging on to, to their old hardware or their games that don't drop in price. <laughs> so, but that's my thought on the on the actual dock being possible to have a GPU in it. Um, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm curious to get your guys' take on this because, I, like I said, I think it's possible. I just don't think it's going to happen. But maybe some of you guys think differently. Maybe you think Nintendo and NVIDIA already had the foresight on this. That port is ready. It's ready to go. And the dock is already in R&D and development. So let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe, of course. And I will see you guys next time.